Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're doing a 4G MIG, that's overhead. Last week we did 3G, which is vertical, and uh, we used some square cut plates like this to get some practice on, and uh, some of the ones I used for the vertical, for setting the machine on, I tacked them together and we're going to get a practice run here on overhead. So setting them up in the 4G overhead position to kind of simulate the groove weld, give them some good practice on the root pass. And this looks a lot like root pass on a regular standard beveled uh, structural steel welding test plate. It gives me good practice on staying on the leading edge of that puddle, not getting out there too far, shooting wire through, and I can get a second pass on it and see, you know, kind of gauge uh, arm positioning and how I want to, you know, my line of sight and uh, the machine settings. This is just a tad cold, but it's a little thicker, so it's going to make a little difference. This is three quarter inch here. So what's a tad cold on here will be just about right for a 3 8 plate. It gives me a little chance to shake the rust off before I jump on a test. And uh, it's very similar, actually. An outside corner joint like this, uh, very similar to, or you can actually do the inside as well and get some good practice. So to prep the plates, these are 3 8 plates with a 37 half degree bevel. I put a 1 16th land, a little heavy uh, on the land, a little heavy 1 16th. And then uh, they go better that way on overhead. And then gap them a little bit narrower, too. Like if the spec is an eighth plus or minus a 32nd, I want to cheat on and go 3 seconds and use up a little bit narrower because it just works better for me on overhead. Uh, otherwise, I have to set the machine uh, colder and it's turn it back up for uh, the other passes. And I'd rather just find a, a thing that worked for all, a setting that worked for all. So overhead doesn't mean it has to be way over your head. Just it's got to be in this position. And uh, you want to get it uh, where you're comfortable. And for me, just slightly over the top of my head is about right. And I want to get a good line of sight on it. Uh, and what I mean by a line of sight is just a good, uh, good way of looking at it that gives me a little bit of a perspective, like not straight on, coming straight at me, but a little bit of an angle. And then I'm going to try some, some hand positioning here and see if it feels comfortable. I don't generally hold the torch like this. Some people do. I usually turn it sideways like this. It's more comfortable for me and press the trigger with my finger and uh, do something like this with my other hand. This is the line of sight that I kind of use where I'm a little bit to one side looking this way. Now the camera view on these welds is from the other side because you know the camera would be right in my way otherwise and so I'm giving you a little bit different perspective on it. But that wasn't working for me as far as the hand positioning and feeling good and steady for a prop. So I figured I'd, I'd clamp a little something on there to help me out, rest my hand on, and that does feel a lot better. The root pass, uh, I like slight drag angle for overhead on the root pass. Dead straight in works, works just fine also for that root. But just a slight drag tends to push it through just a little bit and pushes the wire back in the puddle. Now, again, this is... With the gooseneck bent the way it is, it's a little bit uncomfortable for me to get all those angles with the, with the gun straight back, so I don't do that. I just turn it sideways and, and get in a comfortable position where I can just relax, focus on the well without being in a bind, and uh, turn it sideways, press the trigger with my finger, and that, and that works out good for me. And I take a few runs here and, and uh, see how it's going to work. The second pass for me works better either straight in or just a slight push even works better because I really want that second pass to be a low, uh, below flush and flat. I don't want it humped up at all if possible. And then the last pass, uh, just a straight up zigzag kind of, it can go either straight in or a slight push also. I don't find that pulling on the second and third passes works very good. It tends to mound up. The arc force tends to drive the metal a little bit and push it up and helps and it humps up a little bit. And, uh, I've made it work, and I've seen a lot of guys make it work also before, but for me, a straight in or a slight push, just making sure you're on the front of that puddle works good for the second and third passes. All right, here's the root pass on the first uh, first attempt on the uh, beveled plate. Got about a 332nd, roughly a 332nd gap. And you want to try probably not to do a whole lot of wiggling side to side, but this acted a little bit like it was... Uh, going to be a little bit too mounted up if I didn't spread it out just a little bit. So I'm concerned about that second pass about not having to grind it. Uh, and that's why I did that. Here's a little bit narrower gap and it goes a little bit better. Just a little bit, just a little bit less wiggle. This is magnified a little bit so it looks like a lot more than it is. 
and that works out pretty good. Just a you know, slight convex uh, root pass. I'm not going to have too much of a hard time burning into the toes of those weld. And it, you know, if, you, if you're humped up at all, you want to get a grinder out and knock the cap, the crown off that uh, that root pass, so that you don't have any trouble burning into the toes of the weld. So the second pass, I want to come out not quite. I don't want to nip the edges of the bevel, and I want to go fast enough across the middle, pausing just enough on the sides, not get undercut or anything, but fast enough. I want to be flat. I want to have a nice flat bead, and I want to be about a sixteenth of an inch below flush in preparation for that cover pass because that's going to make the cover pass go in a whole lot better. But that's just a little bit below flush and that's kind of what I want. If you do get a little bit of a crown, a little bit of a humped up uh, second pass, you can still make it work. This is not too bad either. If it gets too out of whack, you, you want to hit it with a grinder before you put the cover pass on if you're allowed on a test. You need to be able to do it without a grinder because you don't ever know what kind of test supervisor you're going to get that says, up, oh, you're done tacking it, give me the grinder. You know, then, then, then you're just stuck. You've got to make it work. So this is that pass that was kind of full, a little bit of a convex uh, fill pass. I'm just kind of going as fast as I dare across the middle and then holding on those uh, toes to, you know, kind of make it go better, make it not have undercut. But uh, it worked, but not as good as this one is a little bit below flush. I know this looks like vertical, but trust me, it was just it's a camera angle. This is this is an overhead shot. It's a little bit different ca camera angle, but this is the uh, the fill pass is about a sixteenth below flush here, and it's going in a whole lot better. And the end result is going to look a lot better. Not because some you know there's the AWS requirements are usually an eighth inch max on the cap on height, and this overhead joint right here, that's the overhead on the left, and the vertical we did last week on the right. The overhead's a little high in one place. Uh, I measured it, and it was just slightly over an eight. There's the root pass. Root pass was kind of flush, but by the time I put the, the fill and the cap on it, it kind of squeezed it and poked it out a little bit. And see, that just exceeded an eighth in one place. Most of it was uh, within limits and under, but you don't ever know, that, you know how strict the test supervisor is going to be on a test. You know, personally, uh, when I grade tests, if, if it's really uniform, if it's slightly above, I usually, uh, you know, would... would uh, would uh, take that into consideration. But here's one that kind of filled out a little bit too much for it with me. It was flat out flush before I ever got started, in which case, you, you know, again, you have to kind of take a little bit bigger step and go a little bit faster across the middle and uh, to try to try to not build up too much, but you're a whole lot, in a whole lot better shape if you can leave that uh, second pass below flush. See, that's that's a little heavy. All right, once again, thanks for watching. That's a 4G overhead, and uh, stay tuned for next week's video.